And so I, I felt like I ought to talk about living a life of impact. Because I, I don't know about y'all, but does anybody here want to live a life that when you come to the end of it, it didn't matter? Yeah. You didn't? I mean, I, I don't know about y'all, but I, I don't think I've ever been to the to a memorial service 20 years after somebody died. Any, anybody done this before? <laughs> I haven't. Um, but man, I, I kind of hope that I live a life that even if nobody does it, somebody would think about doing it. That there'd be, some, there'd be enough people that were impacted by my life that, that there could be a memorial 20 years later, uh, not just by my kids. Going, remember when he did that? He could be a real jerk. Um, anyway, I told you I was tired. And I can be scattered when I'm wide awake. So anyway, uh, so there's, um, when I was growing up, the, the little church that we went to in Indiana um, had at Christmas time, my favorite Christmas Eve service. And no church that I go to and have gone to in the last 15 years will do it because they go, no man wants that. I'm like, well, they should. <laughs> what we did was our, our Christmas Eve service started at 1130. And it was with candlelight, and we had communion, and it was very quiet and very peaceful. And you got done right at midnight, and it was Christmas. I loved it. <laughs> One of the things that, for me growing up, Rich was, like I said, a long time ago. I think it was two days ago, earlier, when we were doing the Q&A. Um, <laughs> He was way older than me. He was 12 years older than me. So uh, one of the things that, that for me growing up, and he was the third in line in, in our family, and I was the baby. So one of the things that Christmas always was, it didn't really always matter what day Christmas was. It was when all of our siblings got home. So that, that might be the Christmas day. It might be a few days before. It might be a few days after. You just didn't know when it was actually going to be, oh no, this is it, right? Everybody's together because that was Christmas for us. Um, anyway, so I remember one Christmas uh, sitting at the Christmas Eve service and there was a little boy that could not sit through it, right? Anybody got little boys? He just can't do it. It's Christmas. I gotta get home. Let's go. Let's get this thing on the road. Uh, anyway, so he got up and went out the back of the uh, the sanctuary or the worship center, as we now call them. And when he went out the back, he came back in completely like, "Mom, mom, grandma, grandma, what, what? Shh. This is a quiet thing. Jesus is here." And I went, oh, Yes, honey, Je you're right. Jesus is here. We're celebrating Jesus' birth. Jesus. No, he's downstairs by the back door. What had happened? Rich came home. And at that time, he had long black hair, a big black beard. You know, he's a little dark skinned. The kid thought he saw Jesus. <laughs> Little did he know. So I've been thinking about leaving a life of impact and uh, thinking about what I've observed and learned uh, from, from my big brother. One thing. If you really want to leave a life of impact, you got to be present. You got to be with people, right? One of the things Rich did that I believe had an impact here is a guy that didn't need to chose to move to the Navajo reservation to be with people, to go, man, here's here I am. I'm a musician. I can't do anything. But I can play you a song. I can be with you. 
here I am. Who are you? Let me learn from you. Let me be with you. He built a Hogan, I think, maybe partly to be with you all. Build it badly. <laughs> I got to go in at once and close the door and you could see light <laughs> around all four sides of that door. <laughs> and not just a little bit. It's like, oh my gosh, my dad would have killed you for that. But he came to be, to be with people. But it wasn't just moving to the Navajo Res. It wasn't just coming to be here, to be with people. He had, he and Beaker started what they called Kid Brothers and what they did, the whole plan was to disciple young men. The way they did that was by being with people. They said, hey Eric, why don't you not be a doctor? Why don't you come be with us and go on the road? And why don't you learn about Jesus? Come be with us, and we're going to learn together. And we're going to find God together, and we're going to grow. And we're going to do it together. Today I did an interview on the, the local radio station here, and uh, Pat was the DJ, uh, and he did the interview, which um, at one point he was like, I just got to tell you, this is just a little bit odd because when I met your brother, he sat in that seat right there uh, and you look a little bit like him and you sound a little bit like him and this is just a little weird. But he said, you know what, the first, I, he said, I didn't spend hardly any time with Rich, but the first time that I met him, he was, he was down here visiting and like people were leading him through our facilities and giving him a, the tour and Mr. Mullins come over here and Mr. Mullins look at this and he said he, they were coming through and they were going on into the next thing and he just sat down in the chair and they kept going and he didn't and he asked me I think he said he asked him what his name was and he said he spent about five minutes with him just talking and he said what you're doing is important keep doing what you're doing that was 20 years ago maybe five minutes be with people if you're with them for five minutes. Be with them. Do you want to leave an impact? It's not always by, by years and years and years. Sometimes you have an impact by, by just a minute. Sometimes you leave an impact by signing a stick for somebody. <laughs> right? We heard that tonight. And now it's laying on his desk and it brings strength at times. Be sure you're with people. Be present in the moments, whether it's five minutes or 50 years. You want to leave an impact? You be present. And my real big brother, the one who really matters, was present. You see, he left the glories of heaven. And he wrapped himself in our flesh. And he walked in our dirt. And our hands touched him and our eyes beheld him. And he felt our pain so that he could be present with us. You see, the most important things that I learned through my big brother, Rich, are really things that I learned from my big brother, my Lord and my Savior brother. He taught us, if you want to leave an impact, you be present. Another thing, be real, be authentic. One of the things that, that I think Rich left an impact, some good, some bad, was he was who he was. <laughs> kind of whether you liked it or not, whether it was politically correct or not. I remember being at a concert, and every concert I ever attended, he said something, I was like, you cannot say that. I remember being at a concert when Clinton was president and uh, Clinton had flown in, I think it was Clinton, 
he had flown into Denver and he sat on the tarmac and got a haircut and they wouldn't let any planes take off while Clinton was in Air Force One on the tarmac because it's just not safe. And so Rich's flights got all fouled up. <laughs> all because Clinton needed a haircut. <laughs> And I don't know if it was the next concert that he did or shortly thereafter, but he was, he was railing on Clinton. And he said, there's still hope. There are still plane crashes. Oh. And it's like, oh, you cannot say that. What is wrong with you? He was who he was. I think if you want to leave an impact, you got to be real. He told the story of writing um, Hold Me Jesus. Uh, and I believe the story goes that, that he and Beaker were on a, on a train in Europe. And uh, they had just been sitting and talking and they're in Europe, so they figure nobody probably speaks English. So we can talk pretty openly. And they were talking about some of their struggles and said they got done talking about it and, and somebody came up to him and said, excuse me, but aren't you Rich Mullins? Are you Rich Mullins? And the time I heard him tell his story, he said he thought about it for a little bit to think back over what he had just been talking about and the guy had overheard and decide if he was Rich Mullins or not. He concluded that he was, whether he liked it or not. Um, Be real. A lot of people were impacted by his music, but I think more people were impacted by his life. And I think one reason is this, because his music was authentic to his life. He wrote hard to get, late in his life. I don't know many Christian musicians that are gonna write hard to get. Because man, that's, that don't make you feel good. <laughs> But I don't know about y'all, but it's one of the things I loved about my brother. When he went, man, God, you're hard to get, he wrote it. And that's a song that my soul recognizes. Be authentic if you want to make an impact. You be really who you are all the time and everything that you do. Don't, don't come up with pretty words to make you sound like you really love God. Do or don't, but be true to it, one way or the other. Now, let me say this. Sometimes I, I hear people talking about be real, be authentic, and they're like, that's all that matters. You can be an authentic jerk, all right? <laughs> that ain't a good thing. It, being authentic and being a it's late. I ain't supposed to say those things. You know what you can be. Man, that's, that didn't help anybody. I think the way to be authentic and make a difference and really matter, well, it, it will matter, but it'll matter in a bad direction, is this. Man, who, who has Christ called me to be? Who is Jesus in me? Man, I, I'm going to fail at it. I'm going to yell at my wife. I'm going to beat my dog, whatever. I'm not going to beat my dog. I will yell at my wife. And I will be sorry for it, even before she makes me sorry. I've lost my train of thought. If you want to leave an impact that really matters, man, set your sights on Christ, the author and the perfecter of your faith, the one who began a good work in you and the one who will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus, and join him in what he's doing. And I believe that when we are authentically pursuing Christ, we cannot help but have an impact on the people we encounter. Be present, be real, and uh, 
the last thing, since I'm a preacher, you gotta have three points. Uh, be less. One of the things that, that I think Rich did well for me anyway, was he had a real ability to even at his very best for me to point me to something beyond him. Because his songs in and of themselves might make you feel good or might give you the opportunity to breathe a little deeper but they can't save you he had an ability to to point me and I hope to point you to something much greater that really can fulfill one of the things that that scares me sometimes with, like I said earlier, with these kind of things. It doesn't make me so mad, it just scares me when I feel like people can't get past him. Because he ain't near enough. But there is one who is. John the Baptist would say when Jesus came on the scene, I must decrease and he must increase. I must become less so that he becomes more. If you want to have an impact, become less. It can be a challenge. I'm a preacher. There's a part of me that wants people to go, I just love to hear that guy. I just can't get enough of hearing him speak. And you're going, why? Um, I don't get it. Uh, there's a part of me that wants, because I don't know anybody who doesn't want to do what they do well, right? I, I, I said earlier tonight to somebody, I, I don't know a mother who cooks a meal and goes, yeah, I hope they hate this. <laughs> we want to do it well. We want, right? We, it's, it's that catch. I want to I want to do what I do well. Amen. But man, I don't ever want to be such a good preacher that people remember me above the one who I'm talking about. You want to leave an impact? Become less. Be sure you're pointing people to a hope that's beyond you. Be sure that you're pointing people to something that will last 20 years, 50 years thousand years after you're gone Amen. there's only one thing that I believe can do that and that is the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives Hallelujah. so my brother walked into to this country church in Indiana <laughs> one Christmas Eve and realized he was late and so he wasn't going to go up and go into the service so he sat down on the bench by the door to wait till it got over. And this little boy saw him and, mista and mistakenly thought he was Jesus. Man, I want to be mistaken for him. How cool would it be that if when somebody met you and walked away, they went, I just met Jesus. And maybe somebody else goes, no, that's just whatever your name is. But their soul recognizes, nope. That was Jesus. Because he was present. 
because he was authentic to the very core. And because the flesh that I saw was so little that I was able to see that which resided within it. Do you want to leave an impact? Be like Jesus. Be present. Be real. Even when people don't like it. Because you know they didn't particularly care for him. And I don't sometimes. And point people to something so much more. I'm going to be done. And I think there's one last hoorah that we're supposed to do. So um, I don't know who all is in this hoorah. But if y'all don't come, then... It's going to be not much of a hoot rock because I'm going to have to sing a couple of songs by myself a cappella, and that's just going to be ugly. I'm a preacher for a reason. So, man, thank you again for coming. Thank you for, for hanging for, oh, my. It's a good thing this is still on Florida time. <laughs> <laughs>